Hello, and welcome to, I think it's episode 291 of the CW2828 Arms Run. What is more important than that, than the number of whatever pesky number of the show we're on? Tonight is the first pay-per-view of season 6. We are here for Raw's Unforgiven pay-per-view event, premium live event. And there was a lot of segments on last year's show, it seems. I thought I'd... Oh, that was the show where I had to do even number of women and men's matches. I see. I see, I see. But yeah, that was also the big reveal of Tyler Breeze at the end up there, I saw. And the debut of Walter. We've really had him on the... We've really had him on the main roster for a year now. And of course, this segment... The crowning of Oni Lorcan as the World Heavyweight Champion. You know. Fun times indeed, but tonight, a fatal four-way to crown the World Heavyweight Champion. Big E, with his back against the wall, defends against Edge, Drew McIntyre, and Sheamus in the main event. We have Nova Nebula versus Bianca Belair for the Raw Women's title. We have Path of the Dragon defending against the Viking Raiders. We have... Mustafa Ali, Sami Zayn, and Joe Gacy in a triple threat match for the IC title. We have Charlotte and Sasha Banks. We have Rey Mysterio and Angel Garza for the Cruiserweight title. We have Gunta taking on Finn Balor. And we have Omos taking on Zergis the Mighty. Without any further ado, let's jump straight into the show. We start on the pre-show. <laughs> what is this, I hear you ask? Shinsuke Nakamura and the Street Profits versus Chad Gable and the Bionic Breed. Good question. <laughs> um, I realised I didn't book a kickoff match, so it's this. <laughs> Just stuck a babyface tag team and a babyface and a heel and a ba heel tag team together in a six-man. Got a decent rating. Nakamura pins Gable with the Kinshasa. Shinsuke winning um was for a reason. So there was a reason I picked him to be in it, which will obviously unfold in the coming weeks. But Nakamura gets a 91, a 78 for Ford, 77 for Angelo. 72 for Dijakovic, 84 for Murphy, and a 79 for Chad Gabble. So yeah, that was just a random match I put on the kickoff show just to, you know, have a one, because I like having one, you know. They, they don't really do them in real life anymore, but I think they're fun. It's fun. Anyway, intro video, all the big matches tonight. You've got the Fatal 4 main event, McIntyre, Big E, Edge, and Sheamus. You've got Bianca and Nova, you've got Sasha and Charlotte, you've got Gunter and Finn. And we are actually going to kick things off with a match that I think could go either way. It could The way I've booked it could lead it to be awful, but the way I've booked it could lead to it being incredible. And I think in real life it would be incredible. It is for the Raw Women's Championship. Bianca Belair defends against Nova Nebula. 83. That's good, you know. I consider that on the good end of ratings, considering Nova got a 79, Bianca got an 86. Yeah, that probably about rounds up. Roughly. Um, I can... I've imagined that some of this match in my head. Like, I can imagine, like, there'd be that one spot. One, I'd probably have it be Bianca hitting a Spanish fly on Nova. Like, I want one of them to hit, like, a, a move like that. Because I think that would be cool. And Nova goes for the 450s. Gets her knee... Bianca gets her knees up all the time. Before finally... A, a KOD from Bianca Belair plants Nova into the ground. And she scores the 1-2-3 in a hard-fought battle, you know. Nova impressed a lot of people in her singles. I think it might be her actual first Royal Star match ever, not just singles. But definitely her singles. Um, first championship match. And she proves that she belongs, but tonight was not the night. The champion was the better woman tonight. And that's reflected in the ratings. Bianca gets an 86 and a 79 for Nova. But much like Champa two days ago on SmackDown, you know. A really eye-opening performance from the challenger here. And a handshake of good gesture to, you know, <laughs> solidify that these are two baby faces and they respect each other after they had a banger. And even though um, Bianca KOD'd Nova through the announce table, that again was all done through respect. And they do shake hands. Nova raises Bianca's arm or whatever. But then there was dastardly, probably Scarlet and Julia pop on the apron. And they fight him off, but then Sonya jumps over from behind, and then they free on one more Bianca. And those dastardly women of the Grand Jury, you know, leave Nova Nebula laying. This is my brutality! Yeah! This is mine! This is mine! This is mine! 
But out comes Rhea Ripley, her music hits. And she saunters her way down to the ring. The steel chair. And absolutely goes to town on all three. Scarlet is probably the first one sent to the wolves. They'll probably send her to meet Rhea on the ramp. Rhea absolutely just waylays them. And she clocks, gets in the ring, clocks Julia with the chair, clocks on him with the chair, probably nails Julia with a riptide. And then clocks on with the chair again, and Bianca gets up and there, and Rhea go face to face. And then Rhea clocks Bianca Belair with the chair as well. And probably Nova if she's up. Just laying waste to everybody. And then Rhea picks up Bianca Belair by, by the braid and hits the riptide onto the like folded out chair. I imagine it would bend as Bianca land on it. That's the visual I've gone for. And Sonya's in the corner, like, laughing, going, Hey, she fucked, you fucked up, Bianca, like, you bitch. As she as B- Rhea's getting booed to high hell. And then Rhea just boots Sonya Deville down as well. So, yeah. Um, that was done for many reasons. I promised to stop shitting on <laughs> Sonya at some point. But she, it, it, it needed to be done for the way I want to portray Rhea in this angle. Um, obviously Boo, you know, she laid out Bianca and Nova. She's got the black hair, you know, she's come back looking edgier. But I want her to be heel leaning, but mainly just sick of everyone's shit. So that's why I made sure to make it a fucking point that she laid out all the grand jury and then after... Like, because it could have been, oh, it was all a ruse, and she actually wanted Bianca. No, even after Bianca had been laid out, she still kicked Sonya, because, like, fuck off, I don't like you either. <laughs> Bianca, Rhea's just sick of everyone's shit. And she gets a new gimmick, because everyone was getting stale. And extremely marketable, and may, may receive a bonus from Book to Look Dominant. Those are two very good Rhea Ripley traits to have. But she's back. New look, new attitude. New Rhea Ripley. <laughs> we then get a quick 30 minute segment. Uh, or we get like an ad for Raw. Raw Metaverse coming up tomorrow night. Where the main event will see Crypto Corbin put his Lazy Ape on the line against Ludwig Kaiser in a Lazy Ape certificate on a pole match. And we then get to Ludwig being interviewed by Sarah or someone. And... So I was like, you know, you get to put your lazy ape up against Crypto Corbin's on Raw. And he goes, I what? He's like, you know, you and Corbin putting your bored apes on the pole. And Ludwig goes, let's make one thing very clear. I do not own a bored ape. And Sarah goes, but you showed it to Corbin. He goes, yes, once that I... It got Corbin to agree to wrestle me on WWE Raw for his prize possession, his board ape. I sold mine. I made a hefty profit, you know. He's got he's got a good gig going on here, you know. But I have no interest in NFTs. I just want Corbin so that he can't have it. And now I do not have one to hang on the pole tomorrow night but I do have one to take that son of a bitch has tricked our good friend Crypto Corbin into putting his bored ape on the line for nothing AT rated match that's nice just a banging cruiserweight match um, 1737, Rey Mysterio retains, obviously. He's not going to drop the bell in his first defense after winning the tournament for it. Unless, obviously, there was an audible called. But yeah, Rey defeats Angel Gaza, 1737, 619, to make defense number one of the Cruise Bay title. 79 for Gaza, 75 for Rey. And yeah, we put the belt on him to try and get more rise on velocity. I'm not going to take it off him this quickly. As Rey rolls on. As the cruiserweight champion of the world. Defeating a former Intercontinental champion. In Angel Gaza. <laughs> yep. Didn't expect this match to be bad. To do, to do well. It goes for six minutes. And it still got dinged for a lack of psychology. The match gets a 70. But I thought it was just a fun match. A fun attraction to put on the pay-per-view. That's all. And it serves another purpose as well. Which we'll get to in a minute. But it is Omos versus Zergis the Mighty. The real life kaiju battle. 
you know, Zaya Lee in Zergis's corner, no Akira and Humberto because they're defending later on tonight. Omas with Bivens and Dewdrop in his. And it's just two big, meaty men slapping each other. Like, just doing the big amounts of they bump into each other and do shit like that. And then one spot I would want to do, Zergis would get, like, I don't know if he'd actually hit the choke slam, because I probably want that to be the finish. But there'd be a point where he'd grab Omas by the throat. And he'd get the big man off his feet for a choke slam. I'd call him up there for a couple of seconds to get that big pop before probably ultimately he ends up collapsing his, and Omas gets back to his feet. But as Omas begins to go for the double choke slam, Zergis powers out. He grabs both of Omas' arms. He pulls them off in that spot, like sure strength. And he hits that big kick, that tail whip to Omas, staggers him against the ropes. And then he finally grabs Omas. He hits a choke slam. But then the lights go out. After however many months it's been, six, five, five, six months, he's been coming since the roar after WrestleMania. And he is unloaded here on Unforgiven. Veer Mahan has come. And uh, Bivens will distract the referee. And Veer would lay um, Zergis out with the million dollar arm. Dewdrop and Zyali would get enough on the outside. Dewdrop would take her out. That boy would also distract the ref to allow Veer to hit the million dollar arm. And then Omar scoops him up, picks up the double choke slam. One foot on Zergis' chest for the one, two, three. And we appear to have, apparently not according to the game, despite me putting it in the road agent notes, you can read it right here. Fear Mahan should interfere against Zergis, the mighty is the finish. <laughs> we have a new member of the Bivens Empire. We have Omas, we have Dewdrop. And it appears now we have, after he's finally come, but he's not quite come to Raw yet, because this isn't Raw, this is Unforgiven. So I guess he finally comes to Raw tomorrow night. Veer Mahan has climaxed here in Unforgiven. Backstage segment, Alexis on her phone. And Tatum and Ivy are probably off like to her side, like giving some weird stare at something off camera. But then the camera will pan out as Alexis is still speaking and carrying cross is there staring at her doing that carrying that dumb carrying cross there. And Calcus and Cutler are behind him. And she goes, so he's coming tomorrow night. Brilliant, you know, that's going to be big for the ratings, big for us and big for him, you know. I look forward to seeing him there, okay, goodbye. And then she puts the phone down, she goes, what? She goes, who was that here? It's like, well, if you must know, guess who's coming to Raw tomorrow night? And Carrion's like, <laughs> don't care, someone that I'll beat up probably here. Alex, like, no. If you lay your hands on him, then I don't. I wouldn't appreciate that because they're big celebrity special guests. Anyway, Logan Paul and KSI are coming back tomorrow. Isn't that great? And Karen Cross like, not really. No, I don't really care about those losers. You know, Logan Paul may have filled himself in that forest of all those dead bodies, but I was the reason they were there. I don't know if I can keep that line in. <laughs> Oh, I should probably record a backup line just in case. Um, <clears throat> no, it, 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 we'll go. well, so you've got to be on your best behavior, you know. I know Logan Paul and KSI are, are pretty much JW superstars at this point, but I still don't want people like you scaring them off. What do you mean, people like me? You know, people like you. You know, you know, you know what happened last time someone laughed at us? It was Cody in the middle of that ring. And he got run down at the end of the night, Bliss. I'm not saying you need to look out when you leave this arena. But if something were to happen to you, I'm sure it would be nothing personal. And Alex is like, well, I'll take that under advisement, thanks. Now get out of my office. <laughs> <laughs> so yes... Logan Paul and KSI coming back to Raw after their victory over Grayson Waller and The Miz at SummerSlam. 
they're back. The Metaverse War seems like the perfect time to bring back Logan Paul. 78. That's actually not bad, given, you know, the ratings of these people here. Ali, Gacy, and Sammy. It is a triple threat match. Goes 14-33. Which sees Mustafa Ali retain the Intercontinental Championship. Pinning Sammy. You know? Gacy hits that, you know, springboard rebound, clothesline, Larry or whatever thing on Sammy. And then Ali takes him out and then hits the 054 on Sammy for the 1 2 3 to make defense number one of the IC title. 78 for Sammy, 75 for Ali, 64 for Gacy, who has taken his first L here, but he didn't take the pin. Now was Sammy's in. And the error of Ali continues with him at the helm of the IC title division. <laughs> the championship performance, you know. We get a recap of, in case you didn't watch Heat, we get a recap of J-Flo winning the belts. Mackie pinned Jordan with the diving big head to capture their first championship. Then obviously, it would be like a no-all from commentary going, oh, they are all champion, they will free bird the belts. You know, I want to make it, I'd would, I would like to make that a point. Which would be evidence because Mackie's not going to sing with the belt on. So, <laughs> Mizuki or Mina or someone can hold it. And they, they do their championship. They've got a new championship winning song to sing. And they finally finish it, get a big round of applause because they're finally champions. Then, <laughs> out comes Aiden English. He gets booed. He's like, silence if you were please refrain from. Showing such disgusting, disgusting behaviour towards the officially licensed greatest musician, musical artist, singer, whatever you want to call it. The greatest artiste in WWE. Now, girls, I've never once doubted your in-ring expertise. I simply doubted your abilities on the microphone and your caliber as a musical artist. But I'm here to tell you it's not all sunshine and rainbows and I would know that because I myself was a tag team champion. But as I said before, my days in the ring are behind me. But what I'm here for now, back here in WWE, not only am I here to crown myself the greatest musical artiste on the roster, I'm here to bring some class back to Monday Night Raw. So, you've had your auditions for Titus World Records. Well, if anybody wants to join my theatre of dreams... I'll take it under advisement, but let me tell you five girls, none of you have the ability and the caliber that I'm looking for in my artists. And then Mackie just gets in his face and he's like, then why don't you leave? <laughs> and like Aiden would like <laughs> wipe his face like he got spittle on his face, he'd try and like wipe it off and he'll go, as a matter of fact, I think I'll do just that. Enjoy your championship reign, ladies. Enjoy the show, WWE Universe. Because I will come calling again. So what on earth is Aiden English planning? I knew this was going to be awful because of the booking, but 70, really? I think just for who's in it and the how, the result, it, it should be better than that. Anyway, Finn Balor and Gunther going one-on-one. -on -one. Balor makes his entrance, Gunther makes his entrance, and the bell rings, and they stand across the ring from each other just having a stare down. And I imagine Balor would, like, charge at Gunther to go hit the sling blade, like, right as soon as the bell rings. When he hits that big drop kick, you know, that big front drop kick that he does, sends Finn flying into the corner. And Finn's like, 
well, fuck, what the fuck do I do here? Finn then flies at Walter with a forearm. Bang, bang, bang. Gunter tosses him off. Big chop, chops Finn. He turns inside out. Another big chop. Another big chop. Just keeps chopping the fuck out of Finn Balor. Then he hits that big Gunter big boot. And then he power bombs Finn Balor. And beats him in about two minutes. <laughs> Gunter gets an 89. Balor gets an 88 because it only went two minutes. Then that's got a 70. And Regal and Gunter don't click apparently. Whatever. I'll have to fix that. But shocking result. Not, not Maybe not shocking result. But shocking match. As the ring general is completely dismantled and destroyed a former world champion here tonight. Then after the match, the whole Regal Coalition get in the ring. They stand over Balor's lifeless body. Gunter puts his hands behind his back. He does the big Imperium pose as Regal claps. You know, Ridge, Dudley, Pete and Florence are there as well. And then the camera shows Finn. And he's laid out. And then the Regal Coalition leave. And Finn, he does like a little... He has like a little convulsion on the floor. And... Regal probably pulls that exact face as well. He's like, what the fuck was that? Eighty has this been match of the night so far? I think so, because the opening match got an eighty three. Yeah, I think this is match of the night so far because Path of the Dragon are the best tag team in the world. <laughs> I'm so I'm so glad that we're finally at this point after two years. Like they're my first true success story. They've, they're my version of the acclaimed, you know, starting from the bottom. Now we're here, kind of shit. They retain over the Vikings, sixteen thirty-three. Tozawa pins Eric with a big diving sent on. The Path of the Dragon make defense number two of the Raw Tag Team Titles. An 85 for Tozawa, an 89 for Humberto, an 85 for Eric, and a 77 for Ivar. Why is Ivar so much worse? Is he declining or something? Inconsistency. Okay, I see. But yes, the the dominant reign of Path of the Dragon. Well, not even dominant, really, because they're close calls. They're just, you know, bangers. Banger after banger after banger. That's these in my world. That ain't the brawling brutes. That's these. <laughs> Yeah, I completely uplifted it, but I knew this would be a good match. In a 93 rated match, Sasha and Charlotte tear the fucking house down again. Like it's, you know, party like it's 2016, but apparently even better because this got 93. I, I wouldn't say either that any of those matches were 93s. And they have pretty good chemistry, so I can run it back if I want to at another point. But I don't know when that would be. But it's fine. But Charlotte is, of course, pissed because Sasha cost her the tag team titles on Heat. This is the first time they've met since that, that occurrence. And then, obviously, she's got the numbers advantage now because Sasha's got Sanger out there and Indy. Charlotte's got Reggie, she's got Jordan, she's got Aaliyah, she's got Scarla. And big brawl. I'd probably have Sanger slam Reggie through the announce table because that's fun. And they get ejected. The other women get ejected, but then as the referee's ejecting them, Charlotte grabs the money in the bank briefcase, twats Sasha Banks with it, and then natural selection onto the case. She quickly like kicks it out of the ring, and then the referee turns around, sees Charlotte just pinning Sasha, and then Charlotte gets the win. Boo! Sasha's under Sasha's streak of never being able to beat Charlotte on pay per view continues here, and twenty three twenty five Charlotte retains. Not, not retains, because nothing was on the line. She just wins. 96 for Sasha, 88 for Charlotte. And, yeah, an easy go-to match that I know will smash every single time. 84 rated main event, that's fine. Apparently 21, 22 minutes was too long for All Out. That That's fair, that's a fair critique game. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Fatal 4-Way. K 
chaotic. Big E, Drew McIntyre, Ed Sheamus. Barricade's definitely going down at some point. I don't know who's spearing who through it, but somebody's spearing someone through it. Uh, <laughs> Big E's hitting a um, springboard spear, probably on both Drew and Sheamus, if I can get them on the apron together. You know, all these kind of big, crazy spots I've got planned. Announce tables back up. And someone else goes through it, I know. Seamus slams Drew through or Big E slams Drew through it or something. <laughs> Drew will probably be the one going through it, is what I'm saying. But then, chaos ensues even further. Drew McIntyre and Seamus are down on the outside. We've got Big E and Edge in the ring. And Edge has a chair and he starts he starts swinging at Big E. And Big E just takes the hits like, come on, come on. And then Edge keeps swinging at him, he keeps taking the hits. And finally, belly to belly, Big E takes him off his feet. He pulls the straps down and he scoops Edge up for the big ending. And he's like, he's like facing away from the hard cam as he scoops Edge up. But then obviously he's going to turn around before he can hit the move. But then as he turns around to hit the hard, hit the hard camera, he's twatted by a super kick from Dolph Ziggler, of all people. And then Ziggler grabs the chair and he pilmanizes Big E's leg and drags him to the outside throws him against the steps super kicks him against the steps like three times and the referees are trying to get Ziggler away and then he's like just stop it go away go away and he leaves through the crowd and people are like what the fuck Dolph Ziggler like what's he doing in a main event in 2022 and that's when Drew McIntyre slides in the ring behind Edge who's down after that big after that he got dropped by the big ending. He was actually hit with it, but like Biggie had him on his shoulders and dropped him. And then he goes, three, two, one, Claymore. Edge is clocked by the Claymore. And then as Drew kips up, Seamus clocks Drew McIntyre with a bro kick out of nowhere. And he covers Edge. One, two, three. Seamus is the world heavyweight champion. 78 for Biggie, 90 for Drew McIntyre. 80 for Edge and 84 for Sheamus. Talk about... I don't know. Endings, huh? Dolph Ziggler running in and attacking Big E. What the fuck is that about? And that cost him the World Heavyweight Championship. And Sheamus has left with it. Pinning Edge off of a Claymore. I guess Drew McIntyre should be happy. You know, Edge didn't win. That's all he really wanted. <laughs> so Big E, I think it's time to take a reflection on Big E's world title reign here. Big E's world title reign, I think, in terms of babyface world title reigns that I've booked, might be my favourite one that I've booked, because usually babyface world champions, and I think he also fell into this category, they sort of become the least interesting character on the show, because like people are just trying to challenge them. But I did a nice array, I think I did a nice array of different stories with him where, like, I'm content with his run. But for some reason, 78, look, 78 here, he's got, like, great star quality and shit, but his his performances in the, the matches themselves were good. But his in-ring performances weren't really, towards the back end especially, weren't really, like, living up. I think he got outclassed by Drew and even Sheamus, like, 84. And Xavier Woods is actually the most popular member of the New Day, despite Big E being the champion since WrestleMania. So, good run for E. But it got ripped away from him by, of all people, Dolph Ziggler. And Sheamus stands tall with a belt. Drew McIntyre debuted a new spot that showcased his athletic ability. Did some sort of new dive, I guess. And went like, which of course, as I said before, you know, these two, they, they've been butting heads recently, but they, they are still friends, you know. James has got the belt over his shoulder, and Drew, being a good man, he's like, you know, the, them's the rules. Offers a handshake out to Seamus. And Seamus is like, all right, fella, all right. Shakes his hand, comes in, big hug. Drew McIntyre and Seamus hug as Seamus wins the World Heavyweight title, and we get the fucking... them holding each other's arms up as the signature comes down the bottom to win the show. When bang, bro kick. You do the good old fake out. Turns out Seamus was a piece of shit. And he leaves Drew McIntyre lame with a bro kick. And he starts stomping on him and attacking him. He goes, attacking him with the belt going, it's mine fella. It's mine. You can't have it fella. Get, leave my fucking title alone. 
I'm better than you because I won this and all that shit. And he pulls it back up to his feet and hits a bro kick on him again. And then leaves with his new world heavyweight championship. And then we, for real, close the show. 86, I will take that, you know. Sasha and Charlotte doing the business. I'm going to give them both hugs after the show. But yes, very eventful show. Veer Mahan has come. Rhea Ripley is back as a heel-leaning tweener. Um, Ludwig has sold his board ape. <laughs> That's the most important news from the whole show. Um, Finn Balor got demolished by Gunter. Dolph Ziggler screwed Big E. And Sheamus is the world heavyweight champion. The landscape of Raw heading into Clash of the Castle might look a whole lot different than it did just a week ago. And what will be the fallout from this show? You're going to have to tune in tomorrow night to find out. See you then.